Today, I'm going to show you a free way to get SEO backlinks naturally to your website using ChatGPT. It's an AI powered link builder strategy I've never talked about before, but it's pretty much timeless. In fact, this was working for me nearly 10 years ago. I'll show you in a minute. And I'm going to show you step by step how to automate and create free backlinks naturally without any outreach using this process. Plus, it can drive more traffic to your site too. So it's a win win. Let's go. So the process that I'm talking about is using data and surveys to attract backlinks to your website. And I'll talk you through how to automate each step in a minute, but basically anyone can do this, any industry, this is not my usual strategy, but you can automate it. And you can see, for example, for Backlinko, you know, DR90 website, if you look at a lot of the pages that are attracting backlinks to the website, they've used statistics and data to attract backlinks to the website naturally. For example, this one, our user and growth stats has attracted 2000 backlinks to their site. It's absolutely insane. A lot of these do follow and these attract backlinks naturally by ranking the article. I'll show you how to do that in a minute for these keywords, right? So this strategy right now, it's not my own strategy. It is trending right now. It'd be rude not to show you this. Brian Dean's mentioned it. Authority hackers have mentioned it recently. Back in 2015, it feels like a long, long time ago now, this process was working. You can see, for example, this article right here is attracting backlinks from DR53 sites. And you can see this was a backlink we got to a data press release we did here. Basically it's a timeless method. I didn't come up with this. I'm not going to take credit for it, but if you want to get backlinks for free naturally to your site without doing any link building outreach, we didn't do any for these backlinks. This process works very nicely. Now, how do you do it? So basically this is going to work in four steps. Now, the first step is to find keywords around data and case studies and statistics that you can realistically rank for. And bear in mind, when you find these keywords and you create the content, you won't have to find any data. I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute, but this is a very powerful method. It all begins with the keyword research. So what do you do? So let's say, for example, we have a website about marketing and you want to find keywords that you can easily rank for that are about data or case studies that if journalists try and research or other websites try and research and they're looking for a source for their content, then they can link back to your site and say, and basically reference you as a source when they're writing about their own content. So basically people are going to refer to the data and statistics on your page on their own site, link back to you as a credit. You get the backlink naturally. They found you via Google for the keyword and everyone's laughing all the way to the backlink bank. You get a backlink, they get a source, everybody's happy. So how do you do this? Well, what you can do is if you go to terms match over here, you want to find related keywords and stats that you could really rank for. Now, problem is some of it's going to be quite saturated, especially in the marketing niche. So for example, marketing stats or email marketing stats, too difficult to rank for. KD85, you got no chance. What you're going to do instead is fill this down to KD20 or less. Let's hit show results. And now we've got a bunch of pages that we could create content around. Now these are 2015 and chances are that even though it says marketing stats, 2015, if people are searching for that in 2015, you can just add 2023 to the title and try and rank for that article there. But what would be really good is to try and rank for healthcare marketing stats, because we can see it's got a volume there and ideally you want a higher volume, but if you've got no other choice, then you go for what you can prioritize. And then it's KD16, so you know you can realistically rank for it. Another good one could be SaaS sales and marketing key stats. And bear in mind, if it doesn't have a massive volume, that doesn't matter. Usually these are underestimated. So if the volume is low, it's okay because you can create content at scale with AI. You can automate it using the process I'm going to show you. And if you rank for say 10 or 20 of these, you're going to get backlinks actually to your site. So if we take this keyword, for example, SaaS sales and marketing key stats, it's a KD5, nice and easy to rank for. And if we scroll down to the first page of Google from here, we can see that the search intent matches the type of content we want to create. Now, what you can see on this page is that people have done up to 50 or 60 different stats on their page. So you want to create a similar amount, right? And then you just rinse and repeat this. You find all the keywords you could create content around matching stats and create the content. Same with healthcare marketing stats. We look at that keyword, it's KD16, but we can still realistically rank for it. And then you can try some other stuff as well. Like you could search for social media stats, TikTok stats, any other stats that are still broadly related to your content, because you can't niche down too much. Otherwise the volume won't be there. 
The other thing to bear in mind is that the data, if it's, for example, related to 2023, you know, people will be searching social media stats 2023. That data probably isn't going to be in Ahrefs simply because it's too new, right? So Ahrefs doesn't have the data on such brand new terms and therefore it's not going to show up on the list, but we know we can rank for it. So for example, social media stats 2023, technically on Ahrefs, it has a lower search volume than 2022, but let's be honest, more people are searching for 2023 these days versus 2022. So don't worry about the keyword search volume too much. And now it is time to create the data. Now, here's the thing. You don't need to create the data or go out and create case study yourself. You can, that will be the optimal way to do it because you'll get better data and it'll be an original source. But if you don't have the time to do that, don't worry. For example, if you look at this article by Backlinko on how many people use Twitter in 2023, you can't really access that data yourself. I mean, there's hundreds of millions of users, right? There's no way that if you're a small business, you can create this yourself. But what you'll find is that there are sources under each section of the content, right? So for example, Statista, Twitter.com, really authoritative sources accredited under each part of the content for this guide that attracts backlinks to it. So you don't need to create the data yourself. You just have to find the data and then put it into a really nice format that's easily digestible. Now, how do you do that? This is where AI comes into place. So you can use a tool like Perplexity AI. And if we go back to our article on say SaaS sales stats, we can say, give me some amazing stats on SaaS sales. Now for this particular part of the process, you're not going to be using ChatGPT simply because ChatGPT 52% of the time is wrong, right? So you're not going to be using ChatGPT to source your data because it potentially could hallucinate a lot. But if you use Perplexity, everything is source-based. Everything goes back to the data. And then you can credit that data in the content that you create, as you can see here. And again, this is another opportunity to get referenced, right? So that's how you gather the data. Now, just quickly going back to the keyword research, I want to save you a bit of time here. You can actually just use Google's auto suggest, auto complete function, and this is completely free to use for anyone. And if you're trying to find more topics, you can create content around, say, for example, you have a website about AI, then you could search for keywords around chat GPT statistics, right? And you can see here, chat GPT statistics, keywords like statistics 2023. If you put chat GPT facts, chat GPT fact sheet, chat GPT facts in Hindi, et cetera. These are all SEO keywords you could target, try and get ranked for. And then when you rank and people find your content, they can reference you and you get the backlink. In fact, some ways this is quicker to find keywords. You just don't know how competitive they are, but you can manually check yourself by seeing who's ranking. And now that you've got the stats, you can collect all the sources, all the stats, etc. You've got them broken down into statistics, growth statistics, SAS statistics, etc. And it's time for you to create the content. So how do you do that? Now, of course, you could copy and paste all this, mess around with it, take your ages to click through each source, but you can actually automate this with an extension that's completely free called Harper AI. And what you do from here is you just say to Harper AI, give me a table of all the stats plus links from this page, along with the type of stat. Just include the URL, not the anchor text. And then from here, you've got a table with the stat descriptions and the source URLs. So what we can do from here is we will copy to clipboard and then we're going to paste it into a table like so. Now, why would we do that? I'll show you in a second. So we're going to download that as a CSV. And from here, we'll go on to ChatGPT4, advanced data analysis. We're going to plug in the data that we just downloaded from the CSV. Once you've uploaded the CSV, you can say something like create a guide on SaaS sales stats, visualize the data into nice graphs, make it easy to read and concise, and include links to all the sources of the data too. What it's going to do from here is obviously this table is very messy. So it's going to pass the data, split it into nice columns. It's going to work its magic. And then from here, it's going to create this beautiful graph right here. No, just kidding. Don't use that. Here's the graph. So it's going to visualize some statistics and data like this. And then it will say, would you like any further analyses or visualizations on this data set? So from here, what I've said is give me more pie charts, bar graphs, and turn this into a nicely designed and formatted blog post about SaaS sales stats. From here, it started creating some more pie charts. It's working its magic again, and it's even giving us a content outline for our guide that's targeting the keyword we're talking about. 
So it's planned out the content in advance. Um, from there, it said, would you like any other sections or further modifications? I've said, just go ahead and write in the guide now. And you can see that it's actually written content as well. Now, this is just a first rough draft. So inside the content, you've got the stats that we talked about. You've got the market growth and you've got the sources. So it's linking out to the blog that we've referenced. Now, as well as generating the blog post content and the statistics and data that you can include in it, you can also go back and forth with ChatGPT in terms of the format that you want, right? So this is not just like a linear process. I think you're going to go back and forth with ChatGPT data analysis to design the content and format it in the way that you want it. So for example, I've said, now give me a list of all the stats in bullet point format, along with insights and organize it neatly from here. It started doing that, but I'm like, let's organize it into the types of stats, not the source. And it started creating the content, but it didn't include the source. So I said, right, include the source too. And this is what I mean by going back and forth with chat GPT. But if you can direct it in the right way, this is an iterative process. You get better and better and better at it. And you just guide it in the right way. And then eventually what it's going to do is start creating a nicely formatted blog section like this. You've got stats on market size and growth. It's passed it from the table that we created previously. It's got the source, the stat. It's even given us an insight on the stat. It's organized it into nice, neat bullet points. If we click on the link, it goes direct to the source that we mentioned previously. And then you can just copy and paste this straight into your source. And if it's good, then you can say, right, this is good. Keep going. And it will do the rest like so. And we can start putting it into a blog post format. So let's create a new post and I'll show you exactly what this will look like when you actually go to post it. And we can base it into our blog post like this. Now we're starting to pull together something that looks like a blog post based on the data. And the better we design this, the more links it's going to attract and the better the content quality is, the more likely we are to rank for that keyword. And from here, I've asked ChatGPT to create the headline, introduction, meta title, meta description. So we can start plugging this into WordPress. So I plugged it in here. We've got the SEO title, slug, meta description. If we scroll up, we've got the introduction already added, table of contents, market size and growth, etc. And from here, you can just fill this out as much as you want to. The more comprehensive and detailed your content is, the better designed it is, etc. The more links you will attract naturally, plus it'll rank better. Now, for me, I'm not a massive fan of these charts that it's generated, honestly, which is okay because there are more ways and better ways to automate your data. So if you want better graphs, and this can take a bit of time to figure out the right way to do it, I warn you now, for this example, we can say, give me some SaaS sales stats that will be useful for a bar chart along with a prompt for chat GPT to visualize it. It will give us the stats and then it will give us the way to visualize it. I've also done this with breaking down the SaaS sales spend by year, and it's given us the relevant stats that we can include in our chart, plus a way to visualize it, which I've then pasted into ChatGPT. As you can see, this is literally the content from ChatGPT, and then it's created a chart that's designed for us like that. Now, the good thing about this is that you're actually adding value inside your article and you're not just copying and pasting someone else's stats and you're providing some unique information because here's the thing. Number one, you're taking all the information from all the sources and putting it into a nice, neat format. As well as that, you're including the source plus a unique insight into that data. And then it's nice and easy to read and navigate through the page. On top of that, you're creating your own charts like these that you've created yourself which is a value add in itself because it's unique. And if you're not happy with the design, et cetera, you can go back and forth with it and ask it to make cleaner and prettier charts, for example, like this one. Now, what works even better is if you use really simple data for your charts, right? So for example, if it's a pie chart and let's say 47% of SaaS companies say that case studies are very effective at boosting sales. So you can create a really simple pie chart like that. It's not too confusing. It's easy to understand, which means it's easier for ChatGPT to design it. You can use that into your content like this. And then you can say, create a few bullet points for the pie chart. And underneath this, you can just paste in your bullet points like this and gradually just build out your whole article so that it looks better. It's designed better. It's got pie charts, bullet points, insights, table of contents, which you can see here and just build out the content from there. The other thing I would say is remove any sort of lead magnets for this particular article because you don't want any pop-ups or lead magnets on an article that's trying to attract backlinks because that can put people off, especially if they're 
just trying to visit your content and quickly find a source to link to. They don't want to mess around with pop-ups. They just want to get straight to the content, see if it's good. If it's good, they'll copy and paste the link into the article and reference you. If you don't like some of the other bar charts you're getting, for example, like this one, biggest sources of sales for SaaS companies, you can just say to ChatGPT, clean this up. And you can see before and after the chart looks a lot better afterwards. And you can also create some tables inside Perplexity AI. So if you say to Perplexity, give me some SaaS sales stats I can put into a table with the source URL, breaks down the table, you take it like that, you put it into WordPress, clean it up a little bit, and then it's got the table with the statistics, the source. If we click on each source, you can see that it takes us to the right page. Happy days. And then you just keep building out the content. So already just in this short amount of time, this content is 700 words. I would aim for about 2,000 to 3,000 words for your content. If you want to create link bait like this, you got the title, you remove the lead magnets, add in the table of contents, you got pie charts, bar charts, every chart you can imagine, some YouTube videos, break it down into bullet points, insights and the sources, add some tables, etc., And then you're good to go and just publish that, get it indexed, Try to go for as many keywords as you can because the more guides you create like this, the more you're going to rank, the more traffic you're going to get, which means the more natural backlinks you're going to get. But that's basically it. That's a free way to generate natural SEO backlinks to your website. Just to recap, so what you do is you find the right keywords to target using Ahrefs. If you don't have access to Ahrefs and use the auto complete on Google, then from there, you would generate the sources based on Perplexity AI, extract the data and put it into a CSV using Harper create the content with ChatGPT, plug it into WordPress and format it nicely like so. And that's basically the process that we used to use to get DR53 backlinks at my old company. And bear in mind, that used to take absolutely ages, whereas now you can sit down half an hour, one hour. Once you get the process down, you can blast for it really quickly. You might also ask, why am I not doing this instead of outreach? Well, here's the thing, right? With outreach, you can be more specific and relevant with your backlinks. So you get more control over the prospects and the anchor text. Whereas if you're getting backlinks naturally to your site, you can't really influence what the anchor text is going to be, where they're going to link from, what sites you're going to get backlinks from, etc. The other issue as well, of course, is that there are limited keyword options, right? So there's going to be a limited amount of statistics and data related keywords you're going to find in your industry. And to rank in the first place, you do need a few backlinks to your site already. If you don't know how to do that, check out my automations on Outreach, Harrow, etc. Loads of videos on YouTube on how to do that. And I still think outreach is the most scalable and the best way to get back into your site. But this method works. A lot of sites like Backlinko, Authority Hackers, etc., credit to them, are using this process extremely well. So basically, you have an abundance of strategies to get free backlinks to your site. So thanks so much for watching. If you want to book in a free call about how to get more leads, traffic, and sales to your website, feel free to book that in. Link is in the comments and you'll get an SEO domination plan. You'll learn about link building. We can answer any questions you have. It's completely free. Feel free to book that in. Thanks so much for watching. Appreciate you. Bye-bye.